Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harry with... JR! We're both from Bell Lost Souls, and today we're taking a look at the brand new Warhammer Age of Sigmar 2.0 Core Rules. <laughs> These are the Core Rules. This is the Core Rule packet from the, uh, war... The, the Soul the Wars. The Soul Wars. Yes, that yeah. box set. So, uh, we, we wanted to show this one off because, uh, honestly, it's, it's, it's less to find. It's, it's <laughs> less to find, but also, uh, it's, it's got some fairly big changes. So, yeah. uh, for, for comparison's sake, here's, like the size you know yeah. of, of the thing here it goes, this, it's this like, rule book it's it's 10 rules. pages of rules eight, uh, like an 18 page document all together yeah. going over things uh compared to the four page <laughs> spread that we had yeah uh from the previous and there's edition. Some, a fairly substance substantive wow yeah. uh changes to the core rules let's uh let's take a look yeah so where's the uh, uh core rules overall there's a lot of similarities yeah. Similarities. There's not. Uh, there are some big changes. There are big changes, but they haven't like overhauled the engine. They've just sort yeah. of refined it and added some more uh, complexity to the game. So if you're a, a fan of Warhammer, this is less like a, a change from say like like uh, second edition to third edition of 40k, right. or or even you know Warhammer seventh to eighth or, or eighth to, to Age of Sigmar for that matter. Right. Um. So yeah. So a, a, a lot of it's the same. I mean, it's still basically you're playing two generals of two armies. Yep. You you pick a battle plan. You do all that stuff. Uh, but one of the one of the first changes that we we see is when it talks about units and uh, uh, there are different rules for split units now, for instance. But yeah. we can get into those a little bit more as as we get further in. But basically, the the core rules now have like. A little more time given to them to, to set yeah. up like how you set up the game when when do you pick an army uh the first real big change is choosing your general i think they yeah. might have covered this in a preview but like when you pick a general if your general dies you get another general you get to pick uh, a new one which is important because uh now any hero can use uh command ability yeah uh that that just happens during the hero phase yep. you get a certain number of command points uh you automatically generate one command point uh, on every turn, but you also start the battle with one command point per uh, War Scroll Battalion you've got in your army. Yeah, on top of that, I think you can also spend 50 points uh, of your of your game points to actually purchase command points as well. Right. So if you got that odd, you know, number that you just yeah, can't like I've got, fit I've there. Yeah, I've got 1947 in this 2,000 point game. I guess I'm taking an extra command point. Right. Yeah, so you get to use those extra points. For, for some armies, that's going to be a really nice little bump. For yeah. some armies, it may not be a big thing, but uh, it's great for just rounding off those extra points. And uh, as you might have seen, but maybe not, because uh, I didn't know about this, there are three uh, generic command abilities now. Oh, yeah, what are those? So there's at the double, uh, which is uh, after after anyone has made a run roll uh, within six inches of a friendly hero unit or 12 inches of your general uh, you can you can treat it as though you rolled a six uh, so if you really need to get your guys up there yeah. you can uh, there's forward to victory which lets you uh, re-roll your charge roll and then there's uh, inspiring presence which is the same as it was in first edition yeah uh, so you don't have to take battle shock tests right and it's great too because again it uh, a lot of these effects are based off the distance to your hero or, or general for that right. matter um, and and again as we have seen in previous other previews uh, for all of the armies pretty much the floodgates are open for your command abilities uh, heroes will have access to these so those command points it's it's a different system than Warhammer 40k but if you are familiar with that one it should feel similar. right it's 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 very similar um a few other changes that they've made, uh, for instance, in the in the shooting phase, uh, it used to be you could you could still shoot your weapons if you're within three inches of an enemy. Yeah, you can still do that, but you can only target uh, enemies within three inches of you. Yeah, you this is this is a big deal. Yeah, and you can also uh, fire into combat still. Yes, you can still so, fire into combat. So let me let me just back that up and unpack that real fast. So if I have a unit of units with melee or with ranged attacks, and Jr. gets within three inches of me. My unit can only fire at the unit enemy unit that was within three inches of me. I can't fire. Right. I can't be locked. I can now be locked into combat in a way that that wasn't allowed before. Right. On top of that, if uh, if if Jr. and I are locked in combat and Jr. has a unit that has ranged attacks and they're away, then they I can, can just still shoot shoot you. I can pepper your guys with arrows and it doesn't it doesn't even matter. What are you gonna do? Right. Nothing. Yeah, I'm gonna get shot. That's what that's. Gonna <laughs> be. So that that's that's some cool changes that. Uh, 
I feel like that's going to um, tweak the balance between ranged and melee a little bit. I think uh, so as well. have a pretty big impact, actually. Yeah, it, it will. And it's in an interesting place because uh, there's a lot on um, melee right now in Age of Sigmar. Like, ranged is good, and right. good ranged is hard to find. Uh, but right. I think this will put a little more emphasis on the mobility of like your melee mm -hmm. units and stuff. I think it's a big deal because of units like War Machines, mm -hmm. who you couldn't lock up before. Yeah, so that's if true. You were fighting yeah. against the gun line with a couple of like maybe a couple hell blasters or a cannon uh -huh. or something like that, and you had your big monster that um, was flying around the battlefield, you literally had no way to lock that thing up from getting shot. Mm -hmm. Now you can send, throw a skirmisher at it, tie it up for a round or two, maybe yeah. even get your monster across the battlefield now. I think that's a huge change and a welcome change yeah, uh, in a game like Age of Sigmar where the focus should be more slanted towards the melee and maneuver. It adds a little more like tactical depth towards stuff. And it... Speaking of tactical depth. Yes. Uh, can you talk about the new Lookout, sir? Yeah, Lookout, sir. So, uh, speaking of ranged attacks, uh, you subtract one from any hit rolls you make for uh, uh, ranged weapons if they are targeting a hero within three inches of an enemy unit that has three or more of their models. So basically, uh, if you're shooting at my hero and he's got friends within three inches, yes. you're at minus one to hit my hero, uh, which is a huge deal. Um, yes. It is a. It doesn't apply to monsters, uh, or you know, like big guys. But it does mean that you can like protect your characters now, which is something that you couldn't yes, do before in yes. Age of Sigmar uh, First Edition, right? Right. Like, that was another thing that people thought was a little odd, uh, just in the First Edition, being able to snipe essentially characters. But now you can still shoot at them. You just if you have friendlies nearby it makes that shot a little bit more difficult which makes sense it makes sense and I, I really like the way that they've done this one because it feels like it, it's not like the lookout sir where where a guy jumps and takes the bullet instead right right right, right. uh which is i mean it's kind of a cool visual but it's very annoying if if you get yeah. like that you get that lucky shot mm -hmm. off you know it's just negated boom like that yeah. Um, this just represents, I think, better the the, uh, the confusion of battle, where yeah. like you've got your target, you know, you want to shoot that guy, but there's other people walking in the way, right. or, or, or like they're they're, the they're pulling you down, yeah, yeah, uh, out of the way instead of leaping in in the path of the bullet or whatever, yeah. um, which is which is nice. Like it, it it also means that you're not walking around with a bunch of ablative wounds, right, 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 <laughs> which which has happened before. Um, other than that. Pretty much everything else is is basically as you'd expect. You mentioned something before about I think it was uh, uh, back at the front. Split here. units, yeah. Those yeah, are on. Your units. Uh, those are on page oh, five. They're back here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they go into like they they mention it and they go into a lot more depth with everything. Yeah. Um, I think that was needed too. The the first rule set was a solid rule set, but it didn't. It, there were some some yeah, gray areas. It was, it was a lot of a, a lot of um, streamlining, but to the point where you didn't have clarity in a couple of places. Yeah. But now, uh, with with the second edition, we can get a little more uh, crunch into it. So, for example, uh, I I love this one with split units. Um, if you end up with uh, units that are out of cohesion, so more than one inch, uh, depending on the unit, yeah. depending on the unit within a. Uh, uh, what is it? I, it? It even spells it out. Uh, yeah, they, ha they yeah, have. They have to inch. be one inch horizontal. When you when they finish any sort of move as a single group, uh, they have to be within one inch horizontally and six inches vertically. Of at least one other model from uh -huh. their unit. So mm -hmm. you got five guys. They can be strung out in a line, but they have to be within one inch or six inches vertically of a friendly model. Right, and it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward, but if they're out of that cohesion, and it's, which is different than in uh, 40K, right? Because yeah. 40K is two inches. Two inches, yep. Uh, but if they're out of cohesion, uh, you have like two groups or whatever, you remove models until you only have one unit that's in cohesion. Yeah. So like if, if you uh, if you are unlucky, because it used to be, you know, when, when you're moving, they have to reform into cohesion. Uh, yeah. Now it's, if, if you like, Pluck out some guys and leave that gap. Yeah, uh, that's on you. That's on you, <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna lose more. Yeah, so I, I, it's gonna be interesting to see how people pull targets now. Yeah. Um, or pull models from from units now because because of that cohesion rule. Mm -hmm. um, there's no longer. Th there was a, a tactics article I remember uh, specifically in Age of Sigmar One where the guy actually showed you could charge and spread out more mm -hmm. and get more out of your unit than you maybe should have been allowed to, but. Now it's cleaned up. Like if you if you're Absolutely. out of cohesion, it's bad times. It's that's it's in the, it's, the pylon. So. That's, yeah, that's that's in the uh, battle shock phase yeah, where the they talk shock, about yeah. all of that. 
Um, and then, yeah, split moot units. What about, <laughs> so everything else is... Everything else is about what you'd expect. They've, they've broken things down, made it clearer. They talk a little bit more about, like, how mortal wounds, like, keep going through and all that stuff. It, but there's no, like, big uh, change there. It just kind of talks about how... Um, how everything kind of goes. Um. Yeah, and it's the same deal with the allocating wounds. Mm -hmm. When you start allocating wounds to a model, you have to keep allocating wounds to that model until it is slain. Uh, and you can't have any... You cannot have a unit with more than one wounded model. Right. So if you take some wounds during the shooting phase and then you take some wounds in the, uh, in the fight phase, the close combat phase, you still are supposed to assign wounds to that wounded model. So you right. can't run around with the guy that's got a wound and then assign a wound somewhere else now. Um, we also, uh, for, for what it's worth, and I don't know that, um, I, I don't know that anything, uh, I don't know that I ever saw these triumphs, but those, oh, the triumphs those, are, are, those triumphs, are still yeah. around. They're, they're there. Um, that, that's for different victory conditions. They also have this big section on wizards now, too. This is a new section, right, JR? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, well, uh, well, they've, they've changed it, up the way these abilities work, is just what I yeah. wanted to mention. Anyway, yes. They, they've changed up the way the wizards work now. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, casting spells. Casting is, is the same, but now there's more spell there, options. There are and, more spell options. You yeah. have the lores of different lores of magic, right? Yes. So it's it's not just like you know one spell in addition to arcane bolt and mystic shield, which is how it is for pretty much every wizard out there. Right, right. Uh, now you get a uh, a, a lore of magic, uh, which is they have some for each of the different realms. Uh, yeah. We don't go into that here because they don't really cover it here. Yeah. Um, check your battle tomes, stuff like that. Check your battle tomes. Check uh, malign sorcery. Also, also has that detail. Yeah, and, and then there's also um, the, oh, also the, the unbinding. Is, yeah, yeah. It's thirty inches now. It's thirty inches now instead of twenty four, which lets you put like a, a big denial area on on those spells. Yeah, which is kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's going to make defensive spellcasting pretty cool, and it's kind of necessary with the with the new unending spells, which we'll cover at a later date, but. Um, terrain rules, uh, I don't, those were, those were not new. No. But they're now more, uh, um, and they have, codified. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they are more codified, and they have, like, subtly tweaked them. So, like, uh, the damned scenery rule has gone down to, uh, one inch instead of, uh, three inches, you know? Yeah. Th things like that. They've, they've cleaned up a lot of that stuff, made scenery... If if you're using the like mysterious terrain yeah. uh, rules, like they're they're a lot closer. It's harder to leverage them. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I, I think you might actually see these used a lot more. Yeah. Uh, other than that, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, there's some battle plans. You from get first yeah. blood, which is in there. These are just the generic ones that you're gonna find. Um, it breaks in, down what a war scroll is yeah. like, your allegiance abilities, all that stuff. That that's yeah. all just like, hey, if you're completely new. Here's yeah. some helpful stuff. It's a lot more uh, user friendly, which is good because they made it a little crunchier. Yeah. So again, just a really fast recap. Yeah. Of uh, those changes, if you are a veteran of Age of Sigmar, here you go. Here's what you need to remember: yeah, your, the major changes. Uh, split units are different. Generals are different. Command abilities are different. Uh, shooting is different. That's a that's a huge that's one. That's a big one. Um, uh, wizards. Wizards are different. Um, if you were using triumphs, those are different. Yep. If you were using terrain rules, uh, mysterious terrain rules, those are different. Yep. Uh, even the way I, I uh, even the way roll offs work is slightly different because I don't think they specified, but you can yep. never modify a die that you're rolling off against someone else. Yeah, good to know. Yeah. But yeah, if if again, veteran players, this isn't, shouldn't be a major change. But if you're a brand new player, this game's pretty easy to get into and start yeah. playing. Um, our recommendation is read through the rules once or twice, set up some models and start playing. Yeah. You're going to find stuff, and it, it, just the repetition of playing is going to help you learn the rules faster than if you just read it four or five times. Absolutely. I, I still think you should read it yeah. at least twice. Do read it and keep it on hand while <laughs> you're playing you. those first couple yeah. of games. But uh, yeah. it's it's easy to pick up. And the, the differences to the rules are, I mean, they're subtle. It'll probably take veteran players a little while to get used yeah. to them as well. But uh, I think it makes for a tighter and more challenging game. Yeah, I, th I think the way, you pull, the way you pull models matters more now. Um, um, consolidating after battle shocks, that, all that stuff's all gonna that be, stuff's gonna be a, positioning, positioning, uh, especially with like yeah. your ranged guys, so much yeah. more important now. I, I am excited to see what happens. Um, personally, as a person who liked running big monsters and 
hated running against gun lines. Yeah. I'm really excited about their shooting changes. Absolutely. Um, I just, I'm glad to see something like that in the game now. Because it was kind of silly to be in close combat with, say, like a cannon and then, and then have it shoot your, you know, dragon or whatever. So, yeah. across the table. Like, oh, okay, that may, I mean, there's not a rule in here that says you can't. So. so, I guess you can. Yeah. So, anyway, again, these core rules, this booklet in particular can be found in the new Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soul, Soul Wars. Wars box, which we have right Ta-da. here, and you can you can see us unboxing Ta-da. this. Yes, uh, you can check out that unboxing on our channel, and uh, it's probably right over there. There somewhere. Keep an eye on that space. I'm Adam here from Bowls. I'm Jr. We're both from Bowls, actually. Thanks, Thanks for, watching. for watching. Click to subscribe. Check out more videos. And thanks for watching.